What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We have a nice package sent out from All Powers once again. You're looking at the SF100 and 200 watt flexible portable solar panels. Let's go ahead and get them unboxed and have a closer look. So on the left we have the 100 watt panel. This thing comes in around 20 by 40 inches. Uh, it's a pretty unique panel as you can see. It's super thin. It is 30 volts open circuit so nice usable voltage for most MPPTs or small power stations. You can see it's super light, really flexible. Um, you can't roll this one up like some of the other brands. You can actually roll them into a, a little cylinder but it's pretty flexible. You've got the MC4s with the little bus connector. As you can see here, we have the 200 watt. This one is around 55 by 30 inches and operates at 38 volts open circuit. So we're going to put these through a little bit of a test. I've got the All Powers S2000 sitting here. I've got the uh, state of charge sitting at 80%. So we'll put a little bit of juice into it. And then we're going to run the EG4 mini split off of it. I'll turn the solar off. I've got things connected up already. So we, uh, we'll get the heat pump running for a little bit here. It's a pretty mild day. It's around 70, 75 degrees, but I've just got the AC running on super low because the sun is pretty hot today. So like I said, we'll flick that solar off and uh, see if these little panels can keep that thing running. So we'll get into the review here, see what these things can do under a little bit of clouds. It's a decently sunny day, but we'll get started. Okay, we're going to start off with the small one, the 100 watt panel. So we need to get it connected. I have the included XT60 to MC4 uh, connector that comes with the S2000. So uh, a nice little Velcro straps on these instead of just like a zip tie or a twist tie. That's kind of a premium feature, I would say. Nice to uh, be able to repackage those instead of throwing away your little twist tie. So we'll get these hooked up. I'm going to set the camera down for a quick second, get it connected, and we'll see what kind of power we can make. Okay, we're all hooked up here. Let's see what it's making. And it's currently making 81 watts, which is actually really good for uh, a portable panel being flat on the ground and being sort of a cloudy day. That's actually pretty impressive. Um, if I were to angle this up a bit more, I might be able to get a little bit more out of it. But for a flat panel on a cloudy day, that's actually pretty good. So we'll get the big one hooked up here and see if that one has a similar result. Okay, we got the big one all hooked up. Let's see what we're making. So we are doing right around 150 watts, which once again is a pretty good result when you consider uh, it's sitting flat on the ground. And I live, you know, fairly far north. I'm up in Canada. I'm nowhere near the equator. So that's a pretty good result. Let's see if we can get a little more here by tipping it. Tiny bit. We went from 149 to 156, so nothing crazy. Looks like we are pretty much capturing everything we can, even by just being pretty much flat on the ground. Okay, I've gone ahead and hooked them together in series here. I'm not sure how this is going to work because they are different size panels. So we're making about 160, 165 watts, which is a little less than I expected, but I guess we are dealing with uh, two different size panels. So that's probably the reason for that. If we had two 200s, I'm sure we'd be doing right around 300. So um, I guess that makes sense. I was hoping for a little higher, but I can't fault all powers for that. These are just two mismatched panels. Okay, so like I said, I have the AC on, but it is on just very low. It's not that hot of a day, so we're going to click the solar off. Uh, sounds like it's still running. We're going to pop over here and have a look at the all powers. It is saying it's putting out 170 watts. I'm going to check the screen recording here. The all powers is usually off by 40 to 60 watts, so uh, that may not be totally matching up, but looks like it is running off of the S2000. Everything sounds pretty good, so... Uh, if you have a little setup like this, as long as it's not too hot, you could actually run your mini split heat pump off of a little flexible solar panel such as this one. 200 watts is all we're using at the moment, so uh, that's pretty impressive. And I'll just show you the heat pump is still running before I kick the solar back on. As you can see, or should be able to see, the fan blades are flying away in there, so everything's running good. Okay, the clouds are rolling in, so before we lose too much more sun, I want to test how this panel does in partial shading. Um, that's obviously a big factor for solar panels, so we're going to take the smaller of the two panels and just sort of put it over different parts of the panel, see how it reacts, and see what type of power we are still able to make. So we'll just cover up one strip of cells here on the side, and it looks like that cut us down to right around 50 watts, so that's not too bad. We did lose... Uh, Obviously a bit of performance, but that's not too bad. Let's see what happens when we cover the second row. And that pretty much drops us off to zero. So um, I'm guessing 
based on the configuration, you don't want to uh, cover more than one row of these panels, otherwise you're going to pretty much lose all of your power. And I'm going to try covering all four rows, but just partially, and we'll see what that does to it. This is covering the little bus bar connector as well. I'm not sure if that makes much of a difference, but looks like, yeah, that cuts us right down to zero. So I'll try putting it on the other side and see if that makes a difference. And that has taken us back to zero once again. So as far as partial shading goes, uh, not the best. Hey bud, supervisor's watching once again. Um, yeah, as far as partial shading goes, you want to keep this thing in as much sun as possible, which kind of is the rule for any solar panel, but uh, doesn't handle the shading too well. It does lose almost all power. So back to 125 watts. We'll let this thing charge up the station a little bit more. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to be it. So overall, these are a pretty cool set of panels. I think these would be super convenient for camping or maybe even putting them on a vehicle, an RV, a boat. Uh, they're really lightweight. They're nice to move around. Um, I like the portable folding panels, but these are pretty cool if you may plan to make them a little bit more permanent. These are more water resistant than the portable ones, uh, the foldable ones, sorry. These are IP68. So um, I have two solar panels on my shed, but I want to put a power station in the shed for the summer. So I was thinking I might strap these up with the uh, included straps. They come with little mounting straps. I might strap them up to these little eyelets and get them up there to charge my power station in the shed. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll put a link to these down below if you want to check them out at All Powers or on Amazon. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.